No, oh, but I, I, I always have this fear that if, if I ever stumble across the secret, then I'll, I don't know, I, I, that, if, if I ever know what I'm, I mean, because to, to me, I said it all in rock and roll style and live forever. Dead, dead and, and Wonderwall, that's probably, they're probably the three, you know, lyrics that mean the most to me. And once you said in rock and roll style, you know, I'm getting up, I'm going out, I'm getting a shag, I'm having a beer, I'm coming home, I'm getting another shag and I'm having another beer and I'm going to go back out again. That's basically what that song's about. So there's, there you've got like your, uh, you know, your youth culture theme there. And then Live Forever is about a relationship with someone like a friend, but not, not, not necessarily someone that you're involved with. So there's the friendship side of it. And Wonderwall is about being in love, so what more is there to write about, I ask myself. I don't want to write about, you know, jumping off cliffs or anything like that just because, just because you're miserable. You know, that's not, that's, that's not what I do. Not just because you're worried about being called a nonce if you talk about it. <laughs> well, well, there's always that, I suppose, yeah. But, um, no, not really. I mean, I can only write from my own perspective, and usually when I write... I mean, I'm a Gemini anyway, right, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite contradictory anyway, so... Usually when, usually when I get the urge to write, I'm usually sort of quite out there anyway. But I wanna talk tonight About how you saved my life You and me see how we are You and me see how we are The person that you watch on the television is not, is not the person that, you know, that lives at home. It's, it's, you know, I'm quite... Which is better? I can see my missus right now down that camera going the one that's on the telly. But, uh, yeah, she'll probably say it's the one that's on the telly, but I prefer the one that lives at home because I don't have to do anything to sit around the house and eat crisps and watch the telly. You know, but I don't know. I suppose you can't have one without the other. I only wear hats when it's raining, kids. That's a bit of advice there from your Uncle Noel. Don't wear a hat when it's raining or it's cold because you look like a knobhead. <laughs> when do you remember music entering into your life then? Through, through, it was through our kid probably. Because I never liked music. I used to, I used to think anyone with a guitar or music, anyone listening to records is a weirdo. And I thought, I'm not having all that. So I went into it, I went into mean, football and I was just running around people's back gardens and it's been a little cut. And then he started bringing on records and then that's it, I just got into it. Then I started singing and I thought, I've had a bit of that. I was just into being a little, I was just into hanging about on the streets, basically. I was a hooker. <laughs> I was a hooker when I was 15, come on. I want to talk about um, people that you admire, people that, from your life, people in your real life, people that you admire. Who, oh, who, who would you... Me mum. My mum, our kid, who have a brother. Tell me about your mum, tell me about... I just, I just admire her. I just admire her. Because she went through a yeah, lot yeah, of Yeah, yeah, no, no, no holding, you know what I mean, no crumbling going on. Just yeah. near lightweight. Yeah. I mean, it's been very well documented, yeah. what, what happened with your old Which man. Which I prefer not to have been, but that's life. And she always, she was always there, wasn't she? Yeah, of course. Always she was there. Yeah, she's just a double strong person. And obviously, there's a total admiration with Patsy as well. Oh, yeah. And well, Jane. What about the change in the quality of your life since you met Patsy? The that, change it? Yeah. Keeps me sane, though, sometimes. You know what I mean? I've always needed someone, you know what I mean? Yeah. I always needed to be around them, you know what I mean? Couldn't do, not, couldn't do it on my own. Yeah. I got. Mad. You're not alone, then. So you're not alone, then. No, nah, can't do it. Can't, can't do it. Need something to bounce off. Because you obviously did miss out on these things because of your dad. I'm, I'm assuming this, but there will obviously never be a time when you forgive the man. No, nah, never, never. Because he, he doesn't even want to be forgiven. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's not. 
if he did, then, it, you know, I'd think about it, but no f***ing way. Then he goes in the, you know, he's just a slag, isn't he, basically? He's always in the f***ing press going on about this and that, saying that I my mum drove me away from them and stuff. You know, it's like bollocks. You were a I see you giving me my eyes, you know what I mean? And that is the end of it. Yeah. And I can't forgive people like that. And I wouldn't want to be forgiven if I behave like that. I'm a, I'm a full-on seeker, but I don't believe in God. I what? don't believe in the church, anyway. Why did you turn your back on that, then? Why? Because, you know, just the way things go. Way for, you know. Because there's one right where it's like... So you get mad in the church, you get married and that, yeah. You go through a bad marriage and all that stuff. Then you, you, you file for divorce. Or you, you can't go and take the body of Christ every week or something because you'd, you know, you break it a marriage or whatever. And then like, everything that she believed in, she couldn't take part in it because she wanted to get out of the marriage and that. So it's like, what? so they weren't supporting them. Yeah, basically, it's like you can't, you yeah. can't take the body of Christ if you choose to and that. And that's the way it goes. So basically, it was like a big f off to her beliefs. So my, mine's a big f off to their beliefs. There's always been an incredible sense of self-belief, and I, I would imagine it was there at the beginning because you all knew that something special was happening. Uh, a lot of people do take that for arrogance, yeah, and they're well, misreading it. Well, that's that's what piss, that's another thing. That, that's what pisses me completely off. Because I ain't arrogant. You know what I mean? Arrogance is rudeness you know what i mean that's what arrogance is it's being rude but with confident is being what's wrong with being confident with that if you're not confident you don't bag of pork scratchings did you ever have that that belief that it would get to this level? yeah did you yeah knew, yeah of course i knew it i knew whatever we'd done it'd be big you know what i mean and it'd be would be number one you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm not... I'm it's not... bigger than that now, isn't it? Though? Oh, yeah. No, not number one. I mean, like, the ones, you know what I mean? Right. The ones who were going to do it, the ones who were going to... I knew that. And now it's come to a sort of, um, thing where it's like... Cause this is where my head's at at the moment, anyway. It's like... Rock and roll, it's... You've got to go... You've got to go somewhere else, you know what I mean? You can write the songs. Yeah. We've got the songs wrote and that, but we've got, we've got to splash a bit of paint on it take it somewhere else. Rock and roll's been rock and roll for the last God knows how long, you know what I mean? I think it's time for the change. I don't know what. I was going to say, what is... I don't, I, I, I don't know, but that's what's going to happen. In our, that's what's happening in our camp at the moment. But yeah, now is the last kind of commercialised record or whatever it is. I think that we're going to do anyway. I think something's going to... And we're, we're stood there waiting with the song. <laughs> Oh, what did I say to him? I was watching a Rocky film, man. <laughs> no, I was watching a boxing, I was going, yeah, it's f So I was watching that fight, you know, the Nazim fight. I was sat in the room and that, and Pat's and that, watching it in the box. I was going, Pat's, he's right, man, he's right, he's got the eye of the tiger. And she went, you what? I was like, she went, you what? What did she say? I was like, look at him, he's got the f***ing eye of the tiger. And she went, yeah, yeah, and I was like, that. you know, proper f***ing sent me crash. I was like, well, as I say that then, I was right in there. Look at him, he's got the f***ing eye of the tiger.